Welcome to the first video in a series of five videos where we learn how to create this particular avatar themed animation. In this particular video, we're going to learn how to create this particular watery effect which will be used to depict water bending. So without further ado, let's start off. We're going to take the default cube and add in a subdivision modifier. So you can go to the modifiers properties and add in a subdivision surface. And we can increase the levels all the way to five. And later on, we will increase this to six as well. Then we can go ahead and add in another modifier, which is going to be the displace modifier. Now the displace modifier works with a texture. So we have to create a new texture. We can change the name of the texture to something like water bending. Now we actually have to give it a texture. So for that, we go to the texture properties tab, which is right at the bottom, click it, and then under the water bending texture, create the type to a clouds texture. Now clearly the clouds are way too strong. So what we can do is increase the size all the way to something maybe around 0 0.8. Apart from that, we also require this to seem a lot more smooth. So we go to object and we change it to shade smooth. Once we have that, we now require this entire object to change its displacement with respect to something else. So we create a new empty axis. Then we can scale it up just so that we can see the axis. We'll change the scale later on. Then we can add in a curve bezier circle. So once we have a curve circle added in, we can take this empty and make it follow path along the curve. So we go to the object constraints panel and then we click on add object constraint and create a follow path. Under the target for the path, we can select the Bezier circle. Once we have the Bezier circle selected, when we change the offset, the empty moves along with it. Now we have to make sure that the displacement that was added to this object moves with respect to the origin of the empty. So for that, we select our water bending object go to the displacement texture and change the coordinates from local to object. And then for the object, we can select the empty. Now, since we had scaled up the empty, the scale of the object reduces as well. So we have to bring the scale of the empty down to one again. So we can go to the transform scale and change that to one. And there we have the original size that we were happy with before. Now we can always animate by keyframing the offset and changing the interpolation to linear. However, since we don't need this to perfectly loop, we can just add a driver of hash frame by some number such as five to make it go around and have the entire aliveness of the object be animated automatically. Once we have that set, we can go ahead and place the camera in the original position that's going to be during our final animation. So we can hit Alt G and Alt R to clear rotation and location. Then we can rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and then move it back on the Y axis till we have our object in frame. Now we have to deal with the lighting. So we can change to the rendered view, select our light and then move it accordingly. So we can hit Alt G to clear its location and then just bring it up on the Z axis so that everything is lit from on top. We can change the power to something much stronger like 5000. And then we can also duplicate it by hitting Shift D and then grabbing it on the Z axis and moving it all the way down lower than the one on top so that it gives a softer light that's lighting up the bottom. Now we also need some light to come from in front and therefore we can duplicate it again, move it to roughly the center and then move it back on the Y axis so that it's lighting the front. Now we can change the power to something much lower so that it looks good overall. We can toggle the overlays to see exactly how it looks. Finally, since we added in the lighting, we can go to the world properties and change the background color to some very dark gray because we don't need world lighting to help set this up. Now our final animation will have a background which is gonna be blue. So we'll add in a plane, rotate it on the X axis after clearing its rotation and location and then shifting it back on the Y axis. Then we can hit S and scale it up so that it completely covers our camera view. We can add in a new material and change the base color to what it's going to be once we actually render our final animation. Now our final animation is going to be in the vertical aspect ratio. So we can go ahead to the, our output properties and change the resolution 
to 1080 into 1920, which is the vertical aspect ratio. Once we have that set, we can go ahead and move our lights as well so that they match up what the final image is going to be. And to not distract us, we can go to the camera settings and go to viewport display and change passport out all the way to one so that we don't see what's outside the final render and we can see exactly how it's going to be. Once we're happy with the lighting as to what it's going to be in the final render, we can go ahead and deal with the material of the actual water object. So we can change the material name to water and then start dealing with the properties. But before that, let's select the three things that we're using for this water material, which is the MD, the Bezier circle, and the actual water subdivided cube. Hit M to create a new collection and change the name of the collection to water. So now that we have everything in its own collection, we can select this water object and then create a new window and change it to the shader editor. We can tap N to remove the side panel and zoom in to our actual material. Now what we're going to do is add in a new shader, which is going to be an emission shader. And we're going to be mixing this emission shader with the principled BSDF using a mixed shader. Once we have both of them connected up, we need to make sure that they mix in a way such that only the outer rims of this moving water actually light up with the emission texture. So in order to do that, we're going to search for what's called a layer weight node. Now we can hook up the Fresnel of the layer weight node into the factor of the mix shader. First, we can control shift click the layer weight node with the node wrangler switch on to see how the layer weight node actually lights up the object. So by reducing the blend, we can create a mask that gets only the edges to actually light up. Now, later on, we can add in a color ramp to get even finer control of this. But for now, until we add in that color ramp, we can just hook this into the factor of the mix shader. We can change the color of the emission to the blue that it's going to be finally so that we can actually see that, yes, the correct areas are being lit up. We can increase the strength to something like 20 for now. However, we will increase the strength even more later on. We can also switch on bloom and clamp it at four for the best results. Now in the materials, since we want this to be watery, watery is see-through. So the blend mode has to be changed to alpha blend. And along with that, we also have to tick the box that says screen space reflections so that we can actually get the screen space refractions added in. Now we can change the base color to blue and we can reduce the specular and reduce the roughness so that we can fine tune them later on. Finally, we have to increase the transmission all the way to one so that it actually is see-through. But right now, it's absolutely not see-through. And that's because we have to change something in the render properties. But till then, the IOR is the index of refraction. And it's actually not realistic to have an index of refraction in this particular scenario be less than one. But artistically, it looks a lot better in my opinion with 0 0.8, which is lesser than one. So that's fine. Now let's go to the render properties. Underneath Bloom, you'll find another option called Screen Space Reflections. So switch that on and underneath that, switch on Refraction. And that will actually make the object see through. There's still a little distortion in our material. So for that, we have to go to the material and switch off Show Back Face. And that will actually make our material look perfectly like the watery material that we actually wanted. Now, although this is good enough for what we would require, a few more things that we can fine tune, such as the roughness, will add in those little specular light reflections off from whatever light sources you have, which makes it look a lot more like a believable water. We also chose to go ahead and add in the color ramp between the layer weight node and the factor of the mix shader and increase the emission strength all the way to something really high, like 350. Now, what happens with that is that you get these dark regions and you can see how it looks without the color ramp because the emission is so high, almost everything starts to light up. However, just by adding in this color ramp, we can change the look to something like this. The black outlines makes it feel more like a two-dimensional drawing which is what we're going for with the avatar theme. 
So that's why I actually like this better. You can see that the right side of the color ramp doesn't actually have too much of an effect, but by changing the black slider from the edge, it completely changes the look of the animation. And therefore, just subtly changing in that color ramp gives you this much more contrasty, cartoonish look to the water, which is exactly what we're going for. And that's why this is what we're going to use. Another thing that we did is in the mat modifiers, we went and increased the levels all the way to six. And with that, we finally had this particular animation once rendered out. This is going to be the water, which is water bended in our final animation. In the next video, we'll be learning how to create the rock texture. We'll be learning how to create the fire texture in the one after that, and also the swirls for the air. Finally, we'll learn how to combine everything together. So we really hope you enjoy these tutorials and learn something along the way. Until the next video, stay creative.